On today's video, I'm gonna be showing you a few things that you need to know to go from just building walls to building good walls, and there is a difference. So building walls seems super simple. You're just taking boards and nailing them together, and you stand it up, you got a wall. Well, it's not that simple if you look at the details of it and how your wall is gonna perform in the finished product of a finished house. So stick around for a second and subscribe to our channel. We're gonna show you how to do it. So the first thing, and I see a lot of people not doing this by the way, is to grade your lumber, cull the bad boards, but most importantly, and this is crucial guys, you have to crown all of your studs in the same direction when you lay them in the wall. If you don't do this, one stud could be crowned this way, and the next one this way, and then your sheetrock is gonna go down through there looking like a wave inside the house when it's finished and look terrible. So this is super crucial. I'm gonna show you how to do it to make your wall look really nice in the finish. So I've got a board here, and hopefully you can see this on camera, that has a pretty good crown to it. And the crown, if you look, is crowned up right now. Um, and you can see that it has a, there you go, mark that crown up. Grainbow, I like to call that, <laughs> just like a rainbow. So this board has about a quarter inch crown up. And if I flip it this way, it'd be a quarter inch crown down. If you can see that, it bows down and back up towards the end. Uh, so this one's barely usable, but for this sake, I'm gonna lay it in. Uh, crown up, I'm gonna lay it in position like this. And that's how we're gonna lay all the boards with the crown facing up so that they all match evenly across this way. So the reason I do mine crown up is that you can see if you do it crown up, this very end and that very end of the board are touching the subfloor and the middle isn't. So you don't have to try and push this board down to flush it with this plate if it's crowned up. If it's crowned down, then it's like, like a rocking chair leg and you have to push both ends down to flush them up with the wall plate as you nail it. Okay, and you might be thinking, hey, that's not very good, a crown up quarter inch, that's a lot. But what you gotta realize is that lumber is not perfect. The things we're building a house with aren't made in a factory, they're harvested from nature. And uh, there's a lot of times where getting a good piece of lumber is harder than you think. And as a builder, you have to pick through it and pick the good boards, align the boards so that they make the house a nice straight house in the finish. You're not working with perfect material here. Nailed it! You don't have to get that close. Okay, the next super crucial thing is that the fitment and the alignment of your boards in the wall are all flush on the top surfaces and that you butt all of your framing members tight to the plates. I pay special attention to the length of the cripples that are cut and put on top of headers. If they're too short, the weight of the roof over time will compress this little bit of gap and crack the drywall over your windows, and you see this in a lot of houses. So here's an example of good. You can see that the stud is nailed tight across the whole way and that on the top surface is flush with this plate. That's good. So I've seen this in a lot of houses where the studs are not nailed flush with the plate. They're sticking up or down because people get in a hurry and don't line them up and that makes for a terrible wall in the finish. When I'm nailing my jacks to my king studs, I like to make sure they line up as well. So I start at the top. This is the top edge. That's the header that's going to come in. And so I will flush this up right there and tack it. One here is an anchor point, and then I'm going to put one here. And I can basically pull this with my hammer flush. And when I put this screw in, it'll suck it tight the other way. Like that. For a good fit on your headers, measure your cripples at the end of the header against the king stud here and here. Not in the middle because this top plate up here could be bowed up or down because it's just an inch and a half thick plate. Okay, so another great tip to save time is to trace the layout on your windowsill plates from the bottom plate. Scratch that, we're building great walls here. Okay, now that we have this wall assembled, we're gonna show you how to straighten the bottom plate and also square the wall so we can ply wood it while it's on the floor. And for some reason, I don't see a lot of people doing this. I see a lot of people framing the wall, standing it, and then putting the plywood on off ladders. First thing we've done here is to chalk a line at five and a half inches in from the framing here. Now we're gonna knock this bottom plate over to this line. We're gonna tack the bottom plate using this line as a reference to make the bottom plate completely straight. So that's in a shadow there, but you can see this plate is knocked down to our chalk line. Next, I'm gonna use some of these nails I peeled off a clip to tack this plate to the floor. OK, 
Okay, now I've got the bottom plate tacked straight. What we're gonna do is square this wall up so that when we stand it, it's plumb. That's what this will do. So you don't have to do any math here. You just have to hook one corner of the wall to the diagonal corner and measure it. And then we're gonna measure from the other diagonal corner to the other diagonal corner and they have to be the same. And I like to say within a 16th of an inch will get you very plumb. So Jason and I right now are gonna pull diagonals, square this wall up before we sheet it and tack the top plate at one place. Nail out so that you can pull it before you try to stand the wall. Just wanna show you that this bottom plate is very straight. because so we've got it to this chalk line here. And uh, it's also square because we tacked the top plate down square. And now when we sheet it, the sheeting will lock this in square. When we stand it, it will be plumb. Awesome. A couple quick notes here about this plywood process. Number one is we've gapped this plywood uh, where they stack together. You want to leave a gap because if this gets wet at all before you get the roof on, it'll swell. And if there's no room for it to expand into, it could buckle. So that's number one. And number two is we've let this plywood hang off of the plate by about 15 inches, you can see. And that is so that when we stand it up, this piece of plywood will lap down and cover our floor band and lap onto our mud sills and we'll nail them to those mud sills really well to attach the wall to the floor so it doesn't fly away, make the house very strong. Okay, so the other big advantage of doing this while it's on the floor is now we can go and put our Tyvek on top of this plywood while it's laying flat on the floor as well and save us even more time. Hey, don't forget to pull that nail we put in that plate right there. Gonna do an extraction. Just like that. Drive them out when you're done. Get rid of them. And uh, wall stayed on the floor. Good job. Bazinga.